Well, 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 well. We are back. We are in Oriza Hero's Grave. A little bit about what we did yesterday. It was not much. We essentially said, let's explore this outer area. Everything inside of this arc wall. We explored everything in here. We fought Death Bird. We fought this draconic tree sentinel, which was a pain in the ass, we found that there was an entrance to the back side of the castle here. So we're saying to ourselves the following. We're not going to go into the capital yet. We wanted to explore what was down here because let me tell you, anytime there is what seems to be a path to below, I gotta find it. I gotta find out what's going on down there. So we are here at the boss, which is a double crucible night boss. Double crucible night boss. Ooh, baby. Oh, baby, baby, baby. So we're going to do the Double Crucible Night boss to kick things off and then come up with an exploration plan. That's what it's going to be. Cross says, hey, Sean, I've been watching you since the Blip TV days. Hell yes. Oh, my God. The ancient times. Says, um... Uh... Oh, there's my mouse. Hey, I've been watching you since Blip TV days. Rarely live, though. Feels good to finally be able to show a bit of support. However, I'll have to jump off soon to avoid spoilers. Happy game. Hey, well, thanks for coming by, Crass. So hopefully... With me opening up that map, it didn't spoil it too much. Eddie the Killer says, Dan, I want to thank you for all the content. It's been a godsend to have something to watch. Well, I watched my newborn. As soon as things settle down, I'll sub again. Hey, no pressure. No pressure at all. You just take care of that baby and keep being a kick-ass. Uh, pet info. Mine. You know, it's actually kind of funny. That is one of the most common use cases for Twitch is parents who are up in the middle of the night and they want something that's stimulating but something that doesn't require full attention. If you're trying to watch something with full attention, you better watch. You better watch uh, Severance. How to get those chariots to not spawn. The key was um, finding... Oops. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. The key was that these little statues that look like this, they shoot a little yellow light down that summons and kind of controls. A little friendo. And so what I did is I hit a tower block that elevated itself. Changing the position of that. Him. Change the positioning of that thing. Which caused the chariots to crash into one. River City Gaming says, Hey, Dan, or hey, Sean. Ben Stiller here. Glad you love the show Severance. Promo check is in the mail. Oh, that's so great. I love that you are such a powerful Hollywood elite that you've simply wished to find where my dress was and got there. That's fantastic. I'm telling you, several is just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Hey, Citizen Alien, good to have you back again. Blue Pair EU, gifting 10. Oh my goodness, Blue Pair. Thanks there, Blue Pair, like you just don't care. I'm actually curious if I can see the heal per second. Ooh, 5, 10, 15, 20, hell yeah. Did you watch Succession or you'd seen it? Eddie the Killer says, yo, what the heck, thank you, Beniscore. Yeah, Beniscore did the targeted gift sub to Eddie the Killer. <sighs> All right. Does holy damage kill undead on the first go like in other FromSoft games? I don't know. Got him so low last time. Got 
you know, one of the best bits of advice you can get is that there is attack, there's lock, there's dodge, but the fourth and most important for this fourth and most important curve. Do nothing. So that way your stamina can get high. Oh, did you see that guy? Go. Great. The fourth and most important verb in the game is do nothing. Put your shield down and walk back. Because you gotta let the stamina rebuild. I've been watching some new player playthroughs of the game. Every time I drink, that happens. So I can't do a stab with my spear. Holy shit, I thought I was out of range. Two hands, he has a moment where he has to pull his shield back out. I'm only focused on the sword shield. He's the tough one. This is a new move for this. These people were always, always love to say, oh, you're getting greedy, you're getting greedy. But really, I think that there should be a lot more emphasis on how important it is to do nothing. Not be blocking, not be rolling, just waiting, 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 letting your stamina rebuild. How does Bestial Vitality compare to the regen physic? I have no idea. I'd love to know the answer. See, see, he like two hands it and then he swings, and then sometimes it'll whoosh, whoosh, and swing twice, or swirl twice. side of a... Oh, fuck me. The range on Lance now is quite long. dangerous time is when they're both not on the same uh, when they're both not on the same camera frustrum yeah yeah I got to use it I got to use it Crucible Knight is like one of my favorite enemies in this entire game I love those he swings and then can I get him once See, I'm not going to attack when I both don't have both of them on the same screen. So this is a good 
good time at rank, but... You, you asshole. It's actually the good thing to do is just to wait until we get a certain attack pattern as a gap. So that's not... Basically, if he has his, this is a good time. Remember when I described something as a good time? how wrong that was. Yeah, I realize that that's a good time if I'm just against the one. I'm getting pretty close to killing the Crucible Knight for Dovis. you think about it as we do. I just accept the chip damage from this. I think I just always accept the chip damage from that spin. Alright, good. Come here, go with this. Loser! Why did that happen? Chitolo says, hey, Sean, first of all, I want to thank you by telling you that your mental and analytical processes have always been a strong inspiration for me in my career as a tabletop game designer. No question impossible. Has it ever happened to you that an illustrious source in the game scene said something completely opposite to what you have always believed when it comes to game design? It happened to me recently, and I feel particularly drained. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, this boss fight is a wee bit loud, so I'm going to peel it down just a tiny... Actually, wait. Let me adjust the audio like this. There we go. Um. Oh, here we go. Um, when it comes to areas of expertise, it's less about truth and more about just data. What the fuck is happening here? It's just information. It's okay if, if there's a designer who says something that you're just like, yeah, I disagree with that. 
Because guess what? There's lots of different games out there. And it's also possible for those sort of people to be wrong. And as a really great example, I'm going to use Dota Pros. Like, when you listen to Dota Pros give their analysis on games, they'll say things like, yeah, I know this match is supposed to be really good for Ember Spirit, but, like, I, I hate playing this matchup as Ember. And that's it. And that that is their full opinion. And you'll hear other pros go, dude, this matchup's amazing for Ember Spirit. What are you talking about? They're like, I don't know. I just I don't, I don't like it. I don't like this matchup at all. And that is both completely fine for them to say. It's completely fine for them to feel. It's literally completely fine for them to feel and think of all those things. And as, as a player, you would just be like, all right. All right, so that guy just thinks that then, right? You wouldn't be like, fuck. This, you know, do I need to rethink everything I'm doing? Swing, swing. So that's, that's what I would do. I would just, I would not think that much of it. I would use it as data, you know? Like for instance, Let's say that this designer was saying something like, randomness is always bad in a game. And you're like, I love randomness. You might use that to not change your opinion to randomness good. Oh, I guess randomness is bad. You might change it to be, in what way would it be good? In what way would it be bad? And use it as a way to nuance and just sit with it. If it changes your opinion in the moment, because it's just such an extraordinarily well-argued point, great. If it causes you to deepen your opinion, great. People say stuff in this chat all the time that I don't agree with, that I will then go do some reflection on, and there's been times where after they've said it, I've been like, actually, that's a good point. I think that that's something that I think now. Other times when I'm like, yeah, literally everyone in chat was disagreeing with me, but by God, I'm right. No, I rolled, you fucking asshole game. It's that actually little thrust that messes me up a lot. And it, and it can honestly be really uncomfortable if maybe the expert was like one of your heroes in the space. Because it can make you feel like kind of an identity thing. Like, oh yeah, this... Like, I don't know about you, but I mean, this... When there's things that are particularly near and dear to my heart, like if you're doing something creative, like doing tabletop games, you're infusing a little bit of your soul into that, you know? You're burning your soul fire, man. All 
All right. Got it. Fuck yeah. And so, w w when you hear those sorts of things, you can feel a little bit like your soul is being... insulted. <laughs> or messed with, at the very least. What a sick roll by me. Holy shit, I can't believe my body did that. I'm not even responsible, I just attended the sick roll. So let me just, I, and that's all to say, I think it's completely understandable that you'd be feeling a little weird about the whole experience. Completely, utterly understandable. And then he's gonna thrust stab me, huh? Are you gonna do it? Fucking knight fully shrouded in shadow. Oh, you're gonna do your shit now too, huh? Come on, Ardovis. I have no idea what the second phase of Spear Boss is. I'm trying to... I think I, think I got the first one. actually don't need to do anything for a second here. What the fuck is happening? Why, why is my thing not blocked? Oh, I think I know what happened. Oh, fuck. Okay. All right. What? Fuck, man. What is this? Oh my god. No. Jesus. Fuck. Dude, I took the drink and he immediately jumped in there. Man, that's the first time I saw that, like, attack thing. Phase two caught by surprise? Well, I mean, it's the first time I've ever seen it. So, I mean, it's hard to describe it as anything other than, I don't know it.
Hi. So, I think that my strategy is correct. I just need to... Be aware. Be safe, be aware. And we even discussed an interesting topic while doing it. It's our first playthrough. It is. We're just shy of 100 hours, Zephyr. Just shy. Alright, so we're going to blank, blank, and then we're going to... Black Flame. Okay, what if I do this? Everything. I think my Black Flame will wear off immediately. is it's done it was done the moment i walked in here oh what So funny this this lance knight i just stay away from hardly interacts with me and then the instant i try to interact there's like so much damage oh, shit that's why i can't just throw out um silly little stabs all right I always forget that when I'm blocking, I actually have pretty insane range. God, this is a tough fight. It requires just me holding up this block button forever. I'm actually going to start being a little lighter on it, because my left index finger is going to fall off otherwise. I see. There's a little bit of afterburn damage. I don't know what to call it. I my bestial vitality to heal me. Huh? I think I'll be able to consistently take out this guy, but like, it's that one stack that freaks me the fuck out on the second one. I think maybe if I get some magic grease in here, some grease. Fuck. Is this 
discover my weakness. I didn't realize I could be blocking it this whole time. The story of all my viewers have been watching me do this build. Oh shit. See what I did wrong? I rolled and then I didn't quickly put my shield out to go back into block mode. I just hit my R1 button while still holding shield. That means when I stand up, I'm standing up without my shield out. That took me a while to learn, but if I'm holding L1 to hold my shield up, if at some point I put my shield down, maybe because I got staggered. What the fuck? Tell you later. <sighs> yeah, if you're holding your shield up and you get stance broken, or you roll and you're still holding L1, you won't suddenly take your shield back out. I really need to maybe go do another run back where I can change my flask allocation. that hits me? Oh, fuck. Dude, the range is so hard. Let's go back to the last side of Grace. By the way, for any of you who are... I I don't know really what happened in the last 48 hours, but my name is S-E-A-N. Those four. Those four. Those are the letters. Do I actually have one of these? Twelve seems good. Twelve seems good. Do I have that many golden seeds? Okay. Yeah, there's been a lot of new folk here giving me the S H A W N, a lot of the S H A U N. Fairy Alice says, "Oh, Sean, yeah, 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 I got the Irish spellings." This thing is so fucking useless. All right, I don't need these. <laughs> is there anything good to even consider having? Lightning. Ooh. I'm gonna hit him with the rots. Let's go ahead and get some. Oops, not holy grace. No one no one ever wants that. Uh, I'm just gonna do the walk, man. Dude, my, my left index finger is exhausted.
Oh. My name is Sean, spelled S-T-E-V-E. -E. Sean. <laughs> oh my god, I'm not running nowhere for nobody for nothing. Barton says, just picked up StarCraft for the first time after discussion about mental models and games, and it's been amazing. Can't believe this has been missing from my life. Oh shit, are you playing Star 1 or Star 2, Bartons? StarCraft 2 has, like, some of the best single-player content in the history of games. Oh my god, Joe Fu hitting us with the granddad joke. I just flew in from Dallas. Boy, is my left index finger tired. Reality, fate of reality says. A friend of mine recommended I check your stream. And remember seeing you from the PC gaming show over the years. Hell yes, loved your day nine daily about your journey through Starcraft. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, PC gaming show. Let's go, let's go. I died in the last one's fiction, you will recall. And I'll be honest, like, I can do stage show hosting live just fine. Like the first PC gaming show. Oh wait, I got to be careful because we don't actually have infinite. Man. How do I get rid of moving knights? It's a puzzle in the dungeon where you get them. After solving the puzzle, they crash into each other. And delightfully, I now have equipment that's even heavier. <laughs> even heavier equipment. Look at this. 17, this is 18.9. Go ahead and equip this, huh? You know what? I'm gonna go through Radon's gauntlets because of the fashion statement. But yeah, like, you know, I, I I can do live show hosting just fine. Well, you can watch. PC gaming show first few years is just is just me on a stage, man. But over time, I started to be like, let's pre-record this whole fucking thing, man. It's so much easier for everybody. Screw live content. Live content, schmive content. And you're like, Sean, isn't this content live right now? Listen, listen, you're not listening to me. <laughs> All right. Bestial vitality. Still first playthrough. Vodka. Vodkanema. What a what a great idea that is. What a great one. And let's do flame. Grant me strength. Put some rot grease on here, huh? Let's come out swinging. Hit him with the rock breeze. Stabby. I'd do nothing for a little bit. Oh, there's materials in my house. How sick. How lovely. He's gonna run at me. Come on. Come on, dirtbag.
Oh shit, I'm low. Fuck. I wasn't watching my stamina to mess that up. I love it. Whoa, whoa, where'd this little guy go? What are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? Oh, Desper, hi. This is such a dumb fight. This fight's awesome. I love this fight. This fight was made for nerds like me. Strange inquiries. It seems that something you said got deleted, and let me say, from the bottom of my heart, man, don't even sweat it. Don't even worry about it. I didn't see it. It might have been benign, but we are hint-free, information-free. You know, don't even... No one's allowed to talk on this channel. <laughs> let me stab the last hit point right out of you. Huh, well, all right. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, like, literally no one's being an evil person by being like, ooh, I want to share with you a cool idea. And Black says, what, what is that shield? It's, it's the shield for adults, my adults. Try lightning grease this time, why not? It's not like I'm doing anything. But yeah, no, I mean, like, like things like, ooh, here's a cool tip. When I fought these guys, I did this, I did that. And then this happened, and I think this is a really great way to do stuff. Like, it comes from people's... Oh! People's excitement about the game. Hey. And that's terrific. But for me, there's so much joy I get from discovery. My souls are somewhere back here. Nope, that's the lantern. Oh, out of lightning. Very, very frightening. See, that's the one that got me last time. And that's the one that always actually gets me in this fight. Might be an opportunity to throw a spear there, but I'm scared. Here he comes. He's gonna try to stab me. Coming, he's coming for the pokes. Back up. I think I can only get in two pokes. Come on, bastard. Oh, oh, he's coming. Not used a single flask. I was tasked with the flask. He's gonna he's gonna fly at me. He's gonna fly. Here he comes. Never been wrong. Not once. Weird feeling for me. Here he comes. There he is, he's flying in. 
See, I told you, called it. Oh, what the fuck? What? Something, something weird happened. Something very, very weird happened. Jesus. Ah, I see that's two hits in one. Alright, we're okay. We're okay, we're okay, we're okay. So that part where I was freaking out, I think that I didn't understand what my state was. It's like... For some reason, I was like, alright, here we go. We're definitely gonna, like, block this and roll. And then I just, like, took damage, and then I didn't roll, and then I, like, hit again, and I was like, ah! Oh. oh, shit. What? Whoa, what the fuck? Oh, alright, th that was the glitch. Not the glitch, but, like, the behavior that I did not understand. Fuck! If I, if I clang against the shield... And I'm still holding L1. It does not resummon my shield. All right, I think we should play. This is a fucking exhausting fight. Alright, there's one. So this guy's throw is fucking... Should I be rolling that? What? Okay, so it's a slight delay. I fucking rolled! You saw me roll! Fuck, man, that is so hard. Jesus. Ay, 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 ay. Fucking hell. Ah. That move is so difficult. I actually think that what I might do is bring that one's health down first. I don't think I understand the rolls. 
or the, uh, understand the throw. Nantes says, can that move even be dodge rolled? Um, it can be dodge rolled. Hey. Hello. I wonder if there's a direction that I need to roll for it. I don't know. Alright. We sort of knew this would be a possibility. Goodness. Well, th there was a valuable thing that we learned in that phase, which is that we can dodge his dive timing by rolling forward, which is actually really helpful. Do I have enough to upgrade? I believe the answer is no. We only have two uh, smithing stone sixes. I mean, we are stacked up for whenever it's time to upgrade the next one, you know. Take out our thing and let's do this. 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 Last one of these fuckers. I think I'm going to stick to the same strategy, because, like, clearly... Oh, jumping, don't do it. Oops, looking at the wrong one. Incorporate some throws in there. Not rolling. Holy shit. Wrong. Oh. I know exactly what I did wrong with my inputs. I know exactly what I did wrong with my inputs. Take America. Um, if so, what happened was so first of all, I'm going to show a couple things th that are happening, which is that so see, I'm holding my shield up, and if I roll, I'm holding my shield again, right? See, I'm holding it. I'm holding it. But notice here is the attack when I have my shield up. And if I am holding and then I roll and then I hit the attack button, do you see how my shield's behind me? See how it's in front of me? It's in front of me because I'm holding the shield while I'm stabbing. But if I'm holding this button and then I roll and then I stab, it, it doesn't get held up again. So... I, I need to be really careful because there's times when I roll and then I go to stab and my shield's put away and then I just get owned. Another thing that's happening is if you lock on to something and then you hold run, you physically turn around so your shield stops blocking. That's what happened at the very end. It's just, it's just a really slow plotting. Be, be careful, kind of fight. But I, I believe we can do this.
hit the fucking... Let's do all this. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get out this. We're going to cast some bestial vitality. We're going to be like, oh my god, flame! Flame, grant me a bunch of strength! Do this. Do this. Do this. <laughs> Alright, am I ready? I'm like sparkling, I got bubbles. These knights are just like, let's just beat the shit out of them. Right there, where I, where I climbed against him, if I keep holding L1, it doesn't pull up my shield again. At least, it does it much slower than if I just tap the button again. Wait, Regain stamina animal. seat for maximum comfort while I'm doing maximum damage. Still haven't been hit yet. You'll see my opaline bubble tier. <sighs> we are Dovis. Loser. I almost sprinted. Turn me right around, baby. My lip set, so I'm gonna do this. Um, 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 um. Crucible Knight or Dovis, and then just Crucible Knight. Crucible Knight bullshit throw more life. Got him. Oh. Fuck, we're dead. We're dead, we're dead. Okay, okay, thank God that that guy just didn't do the thing that would have fucked me over. Oh my fucking god! I had the grease out. I had the grease out. I pulled the fucking grease out, man! <laughs> Fuck. Ah. Uh. Alright. We got this. Stab your soul, so it's super dead. Stab, 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 stab. What? 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 
slow. Should I let this guy reform? He's letting out a little bit. Alright, so, let's see here. So first things first, we're going to do this. Now watch this. Watch the learning occur in real time. I mean, this is gonna be this is gonna be something else. You guys are gonna be impressed. All right, you ready? Ready for this? Pretty sick, huh? And it's funny because like when I entered in, I was like, I'm missing something. Oh, I'm so fucking risky. I'm frisky and I'm risky. Individually, I have this first Crucible Knight on fucking lockdown. It's the second Crucible Knight that, like, I literally need to go through a marathon picking off this first fuck face. Or I even have the opportunity. To practice against the second one. I absolutely did some fish mouth moves. I can tell. Love my shield. My shield loves me. It's 24, 24 pounds. Hate or Dovis. He's such a piece of shit. Rebuild, 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 rebuild. There it is. There's our stamina. So itchy because I've been sweating from all this focus. And our sans this makes me want to try out shields. Uh, shields are so fun. Oh, did you see how lucky we were? God, whoever was like, hey, how about the environment just gets destroyed as they're swinging around? It's like so cool. Fuck. So this is this is the problem. I need to wait for him to slam. Yep, there it is. I need to wait for him to slam, then he slammed, and I was like, Sean, shut the fuck up and do your execution. 
All right, Ordovis. Fucking complete clown. Oh, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Thought he died. Okay, he died. I literally misread the situation. <sighs> Fucking hell. Fill our stamina and we'll deal as much damage leading into this next phase as well. Yes! Fuck, no! Oh. oh, she just didn't do the move! She just didn't do it, that was the key! Is the thing we couldn't beat, we just had not happen! <laughs> Greed rewarded, it's always rewarded. Greed is risk plus confidence. Risk is achievement plus capability. Greed, in short, is a sign of excellence. Oh, oh my god, look, we have this great sword. This is one of the greatest swords I've ever seen. Ixidor, gift in five, my crucible subs. Oh my god, we're getting some crucible subs in here. We're getting some dismount subs in here. My god. Feels so good. Feels so good. Ordovis' is great sword. Crucible axe helm. Crucible axe armor. Crucible gauntlets. Crucible greaves. Dude, two sets of armor from this. Let's take let's take a peek at this. How much does this weigh? 6.6? .6? Wow, I mean this is actually. I mean, this is pretty light compared to how fucking heavy the tree sentinel stuff is. I mean, it's it's just it's just slightly worse. I mean, this is a good bang for the buck. Now let's take a look at that Crucible Greatsword. Where are you at? <laughs> oh yes, where's the Crucible or Dovis's Greatsword? Ooh, or Dovis's Vortex. All right, so it's usual gray sword stuff. What's this do? Oh, whoops! Let me put this away. Ho oh, ho ho! I'm Ordovis. Oh, ugh. my big fat fatty fat roll. Here we go. Absolutely chunky yoke roll, man. Let me tell you, I'm like so big when I roll, you feel it. Did I just miss? I did. Do you believe that I have a quick roll with this? Do you believe this? It's incredible. Oh my god, return of the please. Oh. Oh. Oh my god, I'm so good. Where's my nearest one? All right, so here's here's what we're gonna do next. Here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna wander up here, and to this entrance here. 
Alright, we're just gonna go this way. I don't even know how much stuff I have. <laughs> Weenus. Dude, it's so Weenus. Is that a comet shaking the earth? No, that's just day nine in the Radon armor. How much how many souls do I have? 51k. Not an issue. I think it might be wise. To up upgrade. What are my upgrade costs? I think I'm a little low. Yeah, 55. I think I want to get my Vigor to 30, and then I want to return back to just jamming the strength up as fucking high as I can. James Hans, those gargoyles have nothing on you, and I think they have everything on me. Changing your increases. Anywhere, anyone know where I can get that crucible night shield? What? Oh, 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 oh my god. I was like, my, my controller's broken. Now, I know that there were a lot of questions coming up in chat. Oh, shit, that's literally the last thing I want to do. I know there were a lot of questions that were coming up. Be happy to take some of those now. I saw many at day nines emerge, and I worry about you. You know, I want to make sure you're taken care of. Oh, my God, that was a fight. Oh, there's the adrenaline from the day coming in. Uh, let's do this. Let's, let's pop some stuff. Okay, because so I have some subwoofer drivers bolted to my couch, so I literally feel it. The same goes for your cats purring while near the mic. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Lejong says, how are you doing on this fine hump day? A lot of feelings, a lot of feelings. My little my little doggies in the doggy ER, making sure that uh, shouldn't get something clogged in her. She, uh, she's there right now, so that's why, that's why we went late. Live a little late today. It's okay. She just she puked twice within an hour, and we were like, "Let's call her vet immediately." And they were like, "Go straight to the ER immediately." And so she's gonna be there for a few hours. So you know, a lot of things are going good in life. A lot of things. Are But uh, feeling feeling a little raw today. Feeling a little raw. Not gonna lie. God, God, am I surrounded by great people? God, am I surrounded by great people? Like number one wife, NA. Love my wife. She's the best. Lots of great support. Eric, best business partner could have possibly asked. Just a lovely person. Super supportive. Just took care of shit. Took care of shit. All sorts of colleagues being super sweet, super helpful. You know, it's just one of those times when you're like, alright, this is a tough day, but we're gonna be on it. We're gonna be on it. Best people. Best people ever. Or daddy says, I love that your fur is number one NA. You know, actually, that's, that's a bad habit. She's, she's, let, let me re rephrase it. She's the perfect person for me. Couldn't be happier. Um, <laughs> and when I, when I wanna, when I wanna make some slight jestful comments, I like doing the number one NA. But does anyone, does anyone know the etymology of number one NA? See, I realize now I misspoke. Perfect person for me. That's the right way to say it. That's the right way to say it. Um, number one NA comes from StarCraft, where um, Europe and uh, South Korea were the number, just the number one and number two regions, like by far. And then they started to carry over into League of Legends for a time, and it was considered far and away the weakest region, you know, things like that. And so... I used to ironically describe things as number one NA, which is another way of saying it's not very good. <laughs> but then I said it so much that it's looped back around to become positive, you know, where I'm just like, dude, that was the number one boss one shot NA. Yeah, so. It's pretty funny that it. <laughs> Counter Strike as well. Yeah, no, North America is. North America is just a really shit region to try to get competitive in. Because the biggest thing that contributes to competitiveness in an esport is density. Density, 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 density. And America is not a very dense city. What the fuck did I just say? America is not a very population dense country. <laughs> and, and I'm one of the dense residents of USA. Um, in South Korea, 
extreme population density. Over 90% of the population lives in urban areas. And PC bongs, PC cafes, common after school hangout in the very late 90s, early 2000s that helped explode the entire culture around playing games competitively and trying to get good. And then what did this lead to? It led to, as people got better, if you wanted to practice with people, you literally just took like a 30 minute tram across the city to sit in a computer right next to them that were fucking plugged into each other. And you could get extremely good paying, extremely good competition. You could travel around very easily. If you look at Europe, Europe is obviously not as dense as, you know, a single city like Seoul is. Uh, but the interconnected trains, just broadly speaking, trains in countries, there's a lot more public transit, there's a lot more overall population density in the landmass of Europe compared to America. So, I mean, there's just a lot of ability to travel around. Like, I remember there was the... Oh, fuck, what was the name? What was the name of the German player-only circuit that ESL ran? Why am I forgetting it? Oh, my God, that, like, Hasuabs and Sokka were in all the time. They were, like, regularly trading for, like, number one, number two. Was it EPS, I want to say? Yeah, I mean, they used to just have events where they would travel around inside of Germany to different um, live venues and play, and that was possible. And that's just really not very possible in North America, so... You have to just fly or drive a car and shit like this. It's, it's a lot more difficult uh, for like an entire region to be able to get the same sorts of supports that other regions have. Really, really interesting. And I found the book. I found the book that talks a little bit about this. And I put it out. It's a great little book if any of you are interested in the topic. It was published in the early 2010s, Korea's Online Gaming Empire by Dal Yong Jin. Just really, really lovely read. Was it 2011, 2012? It was even 2010. 2010 it was published. So this is like very, very early. Very, very early. Really interesting. I'm gonna get some, get some fucking water. I'm no longer thirsty. All right. It's time to climb. I think it's time to climb. Here's what I wish to do. I wish to just journey up to here and then probably go straight into the capital from there. This area is so stunningly beautiful. Let's do some horse parkour. What? Oh, bastard goat. Okay, I guess we'll handle that one later. Headshot. I love that they have starting zone babies right here. I 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Give me a break. Die already, would you? But yes, hey, hey. We're not doing a boss fight anymore. I can pay attention. I am a day nine. AMA. AMAA. -A. Are you bullying those guys so badly? Because they ha they're they made of currency, Chef Mark. Made out of currency. Hey, Sad B. Good to see you. The gates are not open. So I see. So literally, this entrance, this entire area that I was zigzagging through, is the interesting lead up to the castle rampart. That brings us here. Do you buy cat trees? Yeah, I have three. Dallas Sooner says, what has been your favorite mechanic or game design change in Elden Ring versus the rest of the From catalog? Well, I think if I had to narrow it down, it would be the fact that when you are at a boss and you're like, ooh, this boss is too too hard, you go elsewhere. And I think that that is, that is the clever achievement that this game does. That is the clever achievement. And let me actually just briefly note, what are we doing right now? So, we we got back to the Altus Plateau, and we've gone through a lot of this area in the Altus Plateau. We haven't yet explored any, any stuff out here. We've just kind of been inside the capital. And I am excited to step straight into what I assume is a really dense, interconnected legacy dungeon. Ooh, baby. Oh, baby, baby baby. Oh, it's so good. So good. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to get the rest of this map to reveal this stuff. David Moresh's Landell soundtrack is so beautiful. My favorite so far. Yeah, dude. It. I actually really got ultra tired of the music in I got fucking so, so sick of the Limgrave music. I think that the music is one of the weakest parts of the game. Um, I don't mind the idea that it's ambiance, but I feel like the track needed to be like 45 minutes long on a loop. Didn't they add new tracks in the patch? I don't know. Still in the areas, get tired of it. But yeah, I think the real achievement of Elden Ring is a game is that I'm tired of this. I'm going to go to the boss. Holy shit. Holy shit. Mamma mia. Jesus. Is the dragon alive or a statue? It appears to be cast into stone. One of the things that was in a lot of the early FromSoft games, particularly the Soul series, is the idea that dragons are connected to... Uh, I almost want to say minerals. <laughs> like stone and obsidian and granite. Scales made of stones, and I love this idea of a great stone dragon that, you know, is, is frozen in flight, frozen in some sort of potential invasion of the city. It was just totally fucking owned. It's so cool. What level am I up to? Nearly 100, I think 96, 97. It's like just getting doggy updates. Just getting doggy updates. Should be okay. Oh.
All right, still, still awaiting, still awaiting some updates. Still awaiting some updates. Now we'll say I think that at this point in time, I still would put Dark Souls One above Elden Ring. For my own personal taste. That may change. Oh yeah, these things can become currency. It's awesome. Oh. It, it could be the case that I will need to end this a little early. Just make sure that my dog's okay. Ethernet with the five gifted subs. Hey, thanks, Ethernet. And it looks like I also missed... I missed a bunch of subs, didn't I? Whoopsie daisies. Apologies. Oh, shit. Ethan says it's not much, but here's some love. Oh, I appreciate that, Ethan. I really appreciate that. Wait, there's a question about what do I mean by legacy dungeon? Legacy Dungeon is a term for how in this game you have these big, open, kind of wander, go anywhere sort of experiences, which I've described as watching two hours of 30 second cat videos. Right? You're just like, oh, there's a little encounter here. Oh, there's a little encounter here. Oh, there's a little encounter here. Oh, there's an item here. Oh, there's a little encounter here. Oh, there's a little encounter here. There's, there's no tightly connected um carefully handcrafted sequential experience as this is right now. Like this, there's the start, and then I have to go down this rampart. To where? I know not, but it's the only path. And just feeling the way in which these regions connect to each other, I think is really beautiful. Look at my toys. And so, since the early Dark Souls games were nothing but really carefully handcrafted, beautiful uh, designs and, and, and areas, whenever there is an area that is designed like that in this game, they call them legacy dungeons. So, for instance, um, this Raya Lucaria is like a legacy dungeon. Castle Stormvale is a legacy dungeon. Castle Morn down here is a legacy dungeon. Castle Redmain here is a legacy dungeon. Probably Nokron, I would consider one. Maybe this one is my favorite. But the thing is that, like, I... I really don't care much for the open world wandering around. What the fuck is this thing? So it can't move, it seems. This, hold up, do this, do this. I like bestial vitality. So, I mean, I, I, I think Dark Souls 1 still has a really special place in my heart. Which is a, a personal thing, which is hard for anything else to kind of override. My smithing's down to 6 is down. 
But even so, I think that the way... And uh, these will be light spoilers. The way that Undead Bird connects back and loops into itself. The way that... Um, the way that, uh, you know, you reconnect back to the Firelink Shrine all those times. The incredible, just back-to-back -back contrast of certain areas, I just think is, is done with absolute perfection in that game. So here's where I'm going to put a little drop-off point here. Which is that I think I can explore this area. With horses, I agree with you, Sean. One of my biggest fears is that FromSoft will see the huge success of Elden Ring and move away from their more traditional world design. Don't get me wrong, the open world in Elden Ring is wonderful in its own right, but for me personally, I prefer the tightly designed and coherent spaces. Here's what gives me hope, Luthor. Here's what gives me hope. Dark Souls 3 was the most successful Dark Souls, and Miyazaki said, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done doing Dark Souls games. And then the next game that came out of FromSoft was Sekiro, which is quite different than the Souls games, and quite different from Bloodborne. Even Bloodborne is quite different from the other Souls games. And then Elden Ring comes out, and it's quite different than all the other ones, but probably most similar in feel to the Dark Souls series, you know? They seem to, one, be comfortable doing stuff that's quite different. Um... Excellent. Um, so, so in my eyes, also, I mean, Miyazaki's pretty uncompromising with his visions. Oh, sh what, oh, what the fuck? I did, I did not see this coming. Back up. Oh, hidden pathway underneath. Fucking sick. And so, I mean, like, I, I I remember reading something where someone was asking about difficulty modes, and Miyazaki just literally goes, yeah, it's interesting, but I really think that none of these games make sense without it. It's sort of core to what games are and core to what I believe makes these games the way they are, so we're just going to keep doing it. So, I mean, like, I, I feel like you have someone who's really sticking to his guns and having success. And let me tell you something. If there's one thing that's true in the investment landscape, if you're an investor, you really don't want to fucking hover over your investments. You don't want to do that. You don't fucking want to do that. Because let's imagine you're investing in 10 different things. And let's imagine there's 20 work days a month. That's two days per thing. Like there's just, there's not enough time to hover anyways. You want to be able to go do your own fucking thing. Well, you know, we want to be able to trust you. So, oops. And so, what better way to get permission to do whatever the fuck you want than if, when you got permission to do whatever the fuck you want, you shipped seven hits in 13 years? Nice. Oh, you have no health, huh? Ain't no lie, baby. Bye, bye, bye. Look at this beautiful interior with the roots of the great Erd tree just wrapping around the top. And these incredible tapestries. Oh my god. It's just beautiful. Shit. Not what I wanted to do. Yeah, I mean like... There, I mean, there, there's plenty of people out there who are sufficiently sick. And by the way, here's another area where I'm going to mark with a little... Hey, there's a hidden path over here. 
The hidden path, by the way, is just to drop down to this area. But I'm unsure which way I want to explore next. Yeah, no, I, I, I would say, Huthor, I think it's, it's, it's reasonable to make the statement, hey, I'm a little concerned. Is that another fucking Crucible Knight? No, thank you. I think it's fine to make the statement, but I, I, I personally... <coughs> I personally, Huthor, I just don't have that much of an issue with anyone. What is this? Oh, it's just fire? Oh, shit. I don't have an issue with any one single person or any one company. Doing a bad job of anything anymore. Because there's so many good games lately. Like, dude, Total War Warhammer 3 was fucking sick, dude. Like, literally, Total War Warhammer 3's biggest fault is that it isn't Elden Ring. That's it. That's like, literally, that's like my criticism of the game. This might be the same path to the downstairs, yeah. Chris, that's a valid complaint. I'll let the team know. Might be, it, it might be one of the only times I feel like in the history of game stuff if I actually had the feeling like, wow. The releases in the market are greatly affecting my decisions. Nice. So this is, this is the underside of the elevator. Show you what I mean in a sec. I don't give a damn. So the elevator that we came up out of is ah yes, it's right here. Here's the elevator. All right, I got my orientation wrong, but I did get my altitudes correct. Here's it's been one day since Sean uh, mentioned Severance. Severance is the best fucking show. Shit is the best fucking show. I love Severance, man. I literally am... I cannot fucking wait. Oh, hi. It's a Friday. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the times, whenever people talk about, like, well, there were... There were market conditions that, that were unforeseen. A lot of times, that sort of stuff. Holy shit, I died so fast. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. oh, fuck. All right, I'm going to answer these in reverse order. So first, Russian ally says, man, why am I able to block some attacks sometimes when other times I get damaged? Attacks can have a mixture of uh, damage types. So if you look at my equipment here, if I hover over this shield, if I bl if I block and something is half physical, half fire, I will block 100% of the physical damage. I will block 80% of the fire damage, causing me to take a small amount of damage. So for instance, if you saw that uh, dragon tail that would go whoosh, whoosh when I was fighting the Crucible Knights, that whoosh tail does some non-physical damage. And so even when I have my shield up, I still take damage. So that's one of the things that's happening. Two, Severance is one of the best shows I've ever fucking seen. Fucking ever. I fucking love Severance. Everyone should see that shit. It's incredible. And then finally, back to the point that I was saying before. I think that as a consumer first, like, dude, every single time I see a comment about, oh, well, you see, there, there were other releases that came out at the time that really ate into our ability to create a product in the market. You know, like, for instance, does anyone remember when Lawbreakers of Boss Key Studios 
um, did not have a good launch. And then they tried to switch to a Battle Royale game called Radical Heights. Remember this? Pablo Dres, give me uno momento. He said with a shit accent. And Ghosty, I, I trust you. Yeah, Pablo, just go ahead. Refresh your own. So, like, there was a statement that was around the... That was one of these, like, uh, there's a discussion about what actually went wrong with the creation of... Oh, you go up here, right? What actually went wrong with the launch of Lawbreakers. And I remember in one of the releases, they were just like, due to competition from games like Player Unknown's Battleground and Fortnite... And I know a lot of people saw that and kind of went, Ugh, of course you'd say that, right? Like, isn't that the thing to say? Ugh. And, I mean, it's not like Lawbreakers was a trash game. It's just that it was not as good as the other titles that were around. And, frankly, I, I know a number of people that played it, and they were just like, dude, the game was, like, way too hard. It was, like, it was way too intense. And, you know, th that's like one of those, that was good, but it's not great. And there's only, um, there's so many gray games out there, right? And I think that this kind of, like, makes my, makes a lot of my opinions about games, games that are, like, seven, or let's say, again, it's a six out of ten. You've heard me just give it, like, a zero out of ten. Just be like, no, this is just literally not good enough. Like, when I played Magic Legends, it was like... Yeah, no, this this does do, like, a non-zero amount of stuff well, but every axis on which it succeeds is still strictly worse than Diablo or Path of Exile, so it's a zero, you know? Um. And, and, and so, a lot of times, when I hear sentiments like, well, we didn't succeed due to other releases in the market, you know, and that's really it, so it was just, like, nothing we could have controlled because we didn't know that they were going to release that three years ago when we started... And so often when I hear that, my, my, my eyes roll in my head. I'm like, I'm sure that's what fucking happened. Ugh. Except for right now with Elden Ring. I'm just like, yo, dude, all I want to do is Elden Ring. And literally, Total War, Warhammer 3, I'm like, this is awesome. This game just, this game is so sick. It's so good. But I am literally going to play Elden Ring. It's like the, the very first time in my life that I have on a personal level felt that. Twin Molds is what I describe in the business as a non-actionable insight. Yeah. Non-actionable insights are the foundation of abdicating responsibility. And see, 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 Implied Yuri says, I mean, to some degree it's true, though. If your MMO releases the same week as a WoW expansion, you literally just lose no matter how good it is. Yeah, yeah, straight up. Straight up, you know, like... What is this? Is the easiest money of my life, however. The things that, like, like, competition is absolutely true. For instance, there are people that had to make a decision. They had to make a decision. Okay, do I get Elden Ring? Or, or do I wait for Elden Ring? Or do I just get Horizon Forbidden West? There are people who did have to make that decision. I wonder how you get up there. Ah, I see. There are people who had to make that decision. And therefore, Horizon Forbidden West will not get as much success as it would have gotten had there been no Elden. Right, so, so I mean, th th these kinds of statements are objectively true. Did I lose my shit over here? I'm just gonna go through the same path that I did before. Not gonna mess around. Ooh. 
So, what 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 I'm what I'm not saying is anytime someone blames market forces, they're full of shit. Totally not saying that. But what I am saying is that enough people who are full of shit who made a bad product and go, oh, I don't know, it's just the market conditions. You know, it's really all that could, uh, you know, it's all that we really were allowed to have. You know, it's because of market conditions. Not us. It's market conditions. A lot of bullshitters have said this before. And so, you know, it's very easy to be ultra cynical whenever anyone says that. Perfume bottle. I really gotta figure out how perfumes work. Figured it out. Seed bed curse. Uh, is it... What? Okay. Is it... It's key item. Curse grown on a body defiled by the dung ear. Tender pox afflicted with omen horns. The dung eater cultivates the seabed curse on corpses. By doing so, it prevents dead souls returning to the air trade, leaving them forever cursed. One of the most loathsome things found in all the lands. Oh. So, I assume that what happens is when you die, you go to the roots of the herb tree that just gives you, that just like resuscitates you over time. That's why every single time we. go down to one of these underground dungeons where we see the roots of an herd tree. We see all these dead souls clinging to the roots. I'm still piecing things together. Now this is an interesting little puzzle that we have for ourselves. In what order do I explore everything? You know what I mean? There's there's a lot of tight interconnected things. I can't tell what that is. It looks a bit like ash. The mouth of a great dragon. Ah. Oh, Th this is actually really interesting coming from Souls. A lifetime of Souls gaming. Like, there's just so many paths to go down. I think I went right back in here. This guy stood up. Music is just haunting you. Or 
first. I don't even remember how to get to my stash. <laughs> This, this has the look and feel of Ash. Can I even... Oh, I can't get my horse... Oh. So again, there were a lot of questions that were coming up while I was trying to take down my double Crucible pal. And I think that's Crucible Knight 6 and 7, I want to say. Anyone have any uh, things that I missed while I was in there? Because normally I... I'm pretty diligent about seeing things and seeing where the conversation is going. But... Oh, oh, you were facing the wrong way. Okay, bye-bye. Ugh. Oh my god. This looks like when I try to cook. Dr. Gooses, what are your thoughts on the game using an enemy as a boss? And we're using it as a normal enemy. Um, it's something that has been in the Souls games forever. Actually, mark this as red. Okay. Cool. Um, and I, I don't know. I think I think I'm o I think I'm okay with it because there is there's two. Okay, so so there's what are you trying to do? What's the point? What's the purpose? What's the goal? What's the wish? Well, with bosses, I am trying to master the patterns. I'm trying to learn when to block and to roll and to do nothing and build my stamina and when to attack and so on and so on and so on. Once you master the boss and you overcome it, it's like, oh, yes, awesome. And you saw that when I was against the Crucible Knight, every time I see one that's alone, I go, fuck yeah. All right. I've mastered this. And so, and then it does little twists. Like the Crucible Knight that I was playing against in Nokron was doing a fire-breathing attack. It's different than what I'd seen. So it allows me one joy, which is the joy of proving again that I've mastered it. Like there, there is literally no more common behavior in skill-driven games that is a, a simple source of joy, which is just like, oh yeah, you're good at that? Show me again. Repetition can be great. The problem I would feel with reusing the same enemy again and again is one, if it doesn't give me another opportunity to demonstrate mastery, it makes me bored. It feels like it's not samey, or it feels too samey. So how do you make it not samey? sort of come down this sort of spiraled area. We haven't gone up to this roof. Okay, sweetheart. Okay, sweetheart. Hey. <laughs> Breaker TV says, how do you stay calm in this game? Well, I mean, I gotta be honest. When you've played as many of these games as I have, it just gets slowly trained out of you. Where like even, even now in these fights, I, I'm only, I'm only trying at like an eight out of ten, at my most. Maybe even less than that. I'm only training it or, or, or trying at like a seven out of ten, because I would rather take fifteen tries at a nice calm seven out of ten 
then do it in 12 tries, trying it a 10 out of 10 every time. Holy fucking shit. Oh, got some night greaves. Hey, hey, no, not on the space bar. You can lie down there. So I think that's a big thing, is that, like, I I've also found in life, if I'm trying to focus at a 10 out of 10 on all my activities, I don't do anywhere near as well as if I'm just kind of focusing at a 7 out of 10 and putting in more hours. Because I find that if I try to focus at a 10 out of 10 for, say, 3 hours, I can do it, then I'm pretty fried. Whereas if I do four hours at a seven out of 10, I get the same amount done and I'm not fried afterwards and I just feel better. I'm sorry, I always forget that that grosses some people out when I just fiddle with my eyes. <laughs> I woke up with a dry left eye because I was sleeping with my Oh my god, look, there's a there's a kitty tummy just off screen. There's a correlation versus causation, though. If you're already good at the thing, you wouldn't need to try as hard. Maybe you're not speaking to me, but I, I just don't know what that means. I just don't know what you mean to say by that. Because, I mean, if I need to do something I've never done at all before. Like, let's say I'm trying to... If you were like, Sean, you now need to not get an accountant to do your business taxes. You need to do the business taxes your damn self. Let's say that's what, what the case was. I'd be like, all right. And I'd sort of lackadaisically sort of start it up. And... Oh, I see. There's this main through line. So if I turn around this way, this leads back to where we came from. See, that's where we started this area, is right up there. You yeah, know, I, I don't feel like it's cor correlation causation. I feel like it's literally nothing uh, to do with that. It's just like whenever I'm sitting down to try at something, I just always find it better to put in a 7 or 8 out of 10. Instead of like trying to go, oh my god, let's try to get in the zone. Let's push this at a 10. Let's fucking, let's go. Arrgh. Here's our castle has been sealed shut, eh? Okay? No. No way. And also, I think there's another... Oh, shit. This is fucking awesome. There's another dimension to this, which I think is, like, super duper duper fucking relevant. Which is that my entire life's... Work has been shitloads of highly intense things. Like, I did Brood War competitively. And now I stream. And in between streaming, I do stage hosting work. <laughs> I have a lot of time spent being stressed about things. And just acting comfortably because in a way I, I've just had a lot of practice learning to become comfortable with very uncomfortable emotions like stress and panic and anxiety and shit not that I'm like immune or it's a superpower but like if I'm in a boss fight my body will give me some pumps of like oh shit oh fuck you know those sorts of things and I, I, I just don't it doesn't feel good but I sort of know what it means, and I'm like, oh yeah, here's my body trying to give me some little bit extra adrenaline because it thinks it'll be helpful. It's not, but I know what my body's trying to do. I wonder if there is a way in. So, do we got a lot of ash here, man? Got a lot of ash. 
Alaria says, it always took me by surprise when you say how stressed or exhausted you are because you put up such a relentlessly bright vibe. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I have worked very, very hard as a human being to, if I'm feeling something internally, trying to think about how I am choosing to express myself externally. Because, like, you know, it, it, let's imagine I'm having a really horrible day. Let's just take the default way in which... I would behave if I were having a really hard day, and someone's like, "Hey, Sean, how are you?" Oh, I'm I'm hanging in there, man. How are you? Right? You 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 convey the stress, but I know the tone. If I recognize that I'm stressed, but everything's fine, and I still have that stress, I don't have to go. Oh, yeah, I'm doing all right. Hanging in there, man. How are you? I can go. Doing all right, man. How are you doing? Right? I'm doing great. <laughs> Maybe not as exaggerated as I'm making it right now, but like, you know. Someone comes in, I haven't seen it, but hey, how are you doing? And it's like I can focus on the part that is joyous and feels good. Hey, it's a dog. I see, I see where this is going. Yeah, so so this this tends to make my external behavior look like I went from a zero to a ten. When really it's like if I'm at a one out of ten, I'm good. If I'm at a five out of ten, I'm good. If I'm at an eight out of ten, I'm good. But it's when I get to like a nine out of ten that suddenly you see me abruptly just I really just don't have it in me anymore. I'm really just completely fried. What? You're not allowed to fight me. Lightning proof drive liver. Interesting. I'm gonna keep doing this bestial vitality thing because it's an easy way to just regain health. Wait, nine out of ten in positivity or negative. If I'm having a, if I'm having an eight out of ten stressed out fucking shit day, I'll behave fine. I'll be good. I have enough composure and self control, and I'm just like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm all right. I feel, I feel fine. I don't feel good, but I'm all right. Hey, look. You literally cannot harm me. I know you too well. Come on. Whoa! I was expecting that stagger. And I mean, a lot of the reason that I am able to do that is that I've spent a bunch of time thinking about how I would communicate when I'd be in a shit mood. And I just don't do those things. And uh, in some regard, that can uh, also be the removal of an outlet for me. So for instance, when, I, when I'm not streaming or doing my work stuff, I don't really go out. <laughs> I find the most rejuvenative thing is being alone, baby. Alone. Love being alone. We're hanging out with my awesome family inside the comfortable walls of this apartment. Oh, fuck yeah. Love it. It's the best. So we're people like, Sean, you're so great with people. Wouldn't you love an environment where you were just able to be around people? No, fuck, fuck no, man. <laughs> like, no, are you kidding me? Like, if I were not streaming six hours a day and instead went to an office, like, eight hours a day. I mean, I say streaming six hours a day, but there's, you know, enough padding time around that it's still on the kind of standard eight-hour day. But anyways, um, Sean, wouldn't you? If you were going to an office, I feel like you'd have the energy to go out? Nope. Nope, you nope. Know. 
Hey, these are the ones from Castle Morn. I was hoping I could get in the lead hit, but apparently it's... I remember that incorrectly. Soporific in Greece. Soporific means to put someone to sleep. Such as my lovely voice. I even find time with good company energizing. Or, or, or um, uh, exhausting. Like, I literally got the chance to see one of my best friends. I've seen two and a half years, not long ago. We, we hung out, and it was like two and a half hours in, and, and it was it was great. It was really positive. Yada, yada, yada. And I was just like, okay, I need to go home immediately. <laughs> and they were like, all right, bye. <laughs> I mean, they're awesome and, like, you know, super thoughtful and understanding, and they totally get it. But it was just kind of funny to me that I was hanging out. I was like, oh, this is so great. I can't believe we're actually going to see each other in real life. Oh, my God. Happy vibes. Happy vibes. All right. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm exhausted. All right. See you later, Sean. Blasphemer. Somba Schmishing Stone. So, I, I, I haven't yet decided what I'm going to be doing with all my smithing stones, so... Oops. Oops. I did put it back. They're, they're correctly ordered now. Yeah, um... I have a ton of these basic ingredients that I, I think I'm going to wait until I've leveled up to maybe... 60 strength or something before I start doing this. I also have a lot of somber smithing stones. Somber smithing stones are used to reinforce some of the armaments that you get from from gods. I have tons of grove love wart. A lot of things that I haven't done. I mean, there, there's even like really basic things I haven't done yet. Like, I should I should do this at some point. I keep forgetting to give these to the to the maidens. I mean, it literally tells you to do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how we got on this topic, but I think it's an interesting one. I think it is a very interesting one. Tokyo Games, did you do paintings? So you got some in your inventory. This is kind of a funny interaction that I have with this one. If I can just get a stab off. I actually beat them with a punch with virtually every attack. So you can just keep stagger, stagger, stagger. So I'm seeing that this is... If I go through this gate, it deposits me back this way, which opens up to this new area, which just tickles me. So I'm going to try to go through this area. Then I'm going to walk back, come out this gate, and then if I go through this structure right here, this should relink back. Because you'll recall that right outside here, there's a little door right here that says does not open from this side. And if you look, there's nothing else nearby except for that yellow one. So that's what I think. Atlanta Cotto says, still baffles me how they managed to sell the scale of the world seemingly without using things like false backdrops or map warping. Not that those things are negative, but wow. Yeah, it's like they do a lot of tricks repeatedly that I think are really, really, really clever. And I think a lot of it is... A lot of it is not actually related to size of things. But is instead related to expectation management. What does that mean? Find out next week on Dragon Ball Z. Fuck. Bubble. Oh, 
Holy fucking shit, these fuckers deal some damage, man. Same, same beast as Castle Morn. Easy. Peasy lemon squeezy. Yeah, I think the the most effective technique that this game does is it messes with your expectations of what the size of the game is. Because imagine, imagine if you opened up the map and you saw the entirety of the map. You'd get one Whoa, it's so big moment. But this game creates multiple holy shit that's so big moment by first, there is the gradual growth that you experience exploring Limgrave and the Weeping Peninsula. And then you go into that chest that sends you to Kaled and you go, holy shit, there's stuff over here. Whoa. Right, so I'm, by the way, I'm only talking about the map itself. And then you get to the far south of the Weeping Peninsula and you get to the top of that tower and you look and you're fucking way north. Like literally, you get teleported to here, to the Divine Bridge. From down here. And so suddenly you're like, holy shit. And like you've only explored this much area and you see you're something far away. Another holy shit, that's huge moment. Then you're starting to get a sense of, wow, this, this place is big. And then it reveals that there's underground areas and there's an underground map, which makes you go, holy shit, this area is so fucking big. This game is so huge. So, I mean, it's kind of doing this repeatedly in lots of different ways. And in terms of the expectation management side of things, that, that's just with regards to map growth. Right, but again, I want to stress that the idea is that you get these spike moments of, whoa, due to the fact that the game seems to say, okay, well, you're this big. Surprise, you're this big, right? Because again, what's the expectation that you have when you look at a map? Oh, this is the game. Reference to myself. Oh, I'm so arrogant. Um, you broke through that expectation. Oh my gosh, look, it's, it's actually a different established size. Holy cow. It also does this visually, right? So when you first step into the game, it creates a sense of, so I talked about the idea of, of, of breaking expectations. Oh, here's the size of the map. Surprise, it's bigger. Here's the size of the map. Surprise, it's bigger, right? It keeps doing this. Um, another way in which I think that it does this is it creates a really nice, very... Th notice how simple this loop is. Anticipation. Build up. And then pay off back into anticipation. So, what do I mean by this? Well, first of all, when you see an Erd tree, you go, Holy shit, what's that over there? Right? Or at the very start of the game, when you um, step into the world, you see a huge castle here. And you see the Divine Tower of Limgrave. I mean, that's literally the very first view you have at the first step. Ah, very aptly named. So this makes you go, what the fuck is in this castle? You anticipate. Ah, oh, what is there? Then there, it's not just that you go to there. There is a slow escalation leading up to it, right? You go through the gates. You start to move vertically up, which is a change in some way. It's not like you walked across the same boring, flat, dry, stupid-ass plane, and then there was a door. You, hey, we're here now. There was a slow escalation, right? Anticipation. Ooh, what's in there? What's in there? Ooh, I'm not, I'm not good enough to get through Stormgate. Ah, oh, shit. 
but what's in there, but what's in there? And then you get past Stormgate and Escalation, get past Dog, save this, get past all these dudes and these ballistas, and then boom, you get to Margit the Fell. Fuck, huge escalation. And then payoff, you get to Stormvale Castle, and it's some fucking sweet, awesome content. And that loop of anticipation, how do you get anticipation? By having huge towering objects soaring over the landscape that you're looking at. Holy shit, anticipation. What's over here? What's over there? What's over there? You have all these question marks. You can only do one at a time, which means you keep anticipating the other things you're not doing while you're doing this one. And what happens? There's a buildup. And then when you get to the end, the fucking payoff. Ah, oh, that feels so good to have done that. Rarely does this game not have big payoff moments for escalation or curiosity. And the sort of payoffs, payoff tends to be um, proportional to how much buildup and anticipation there is, right? So, for instance, these walking mausoleums, I think there's one that's... I maybe even never picked off this one, but he's here. You know, when you, when you see this mausoleum, there's not really a buildup to it. You just walk up to the mausoleum, and then you knock it down. There's something very interesting in there, but you knock it down. Ooh, how exciting. How thrilling. So I think, first of all, coming to the map-driven expectation management that's happening there, right? You start to get these landmark anticipation moments, landmark anticipation moments that are happening. Um, where you start being curious, what's here? What, how do I get there? And frankly, a lot of the difficulty creates a barrier that's kind of like saying, hey, this present, I was going to let you open up. We're going to open it three days later because I got something special for you in there. Okay, I mean, I I, I want to open it now, but now I, like, really want to open it. <laughs> the game, like, builds this up. So I think that's another thing. And I think that um, sort of in this same vein, it keeps doing variations of these things. So, for instance, coming back to the expectation management thing, I want to explore here. And if you start to explore this, you discover there's a giant cave under here. Oh my god, discovery, breaking of expectations. There are, I've already discovered that there's an underground map, but in the overground map, there can be like hidden caves and verticality. Oh, that's so exciting. And I think that like, it also, es like, so I'm talking, uh, when I was talking about the escalation and anticipation that builds up between, ooh, I'm excited, what is this? Ooh, it escalates and builds up, bam, the payoff is really satisfying. It does this in ways big and small, and one of the biggest ones in the game is trying to get the fuck up to this plateau. M this area, Lyernia, Limgrave, Kaelid, has much more open terrain that you can just kind of go through. I mean, there's technically like a little bit of surface area here that you can explore, and there's technically only two like very tight entrances into Lyernia, but one of them is through the castle, which you're doing anyways, and the other one here, you just literally walk here. It's, like, trivial to get to Lyrnia. But when you see this towering wall that you just can't get past, like, even still, I've not explored this area here. This towering wall with the grand lift of Dectus, with the ruin-strewn precipice, this huge wall. I didn't even get a fucking hint as to what was up here. And then, when you get up here, it's Fucking huge! And the and the this is the biggest city in the fucking game. Fuck! Right? It's just it's so exciting. So I think that this is something that if I kind of describe anti patterns to this, Fallout 3, which I adore. Let's get that right, right? I have no I have no qualms with Fallout 3 as a game. I think the game's fucking rad. I played it at a very important time of life. Oh, you're not dead. Played a very important time. I love that. Game. The game is it, it's it's very flat. It's very open. You know, you you kind of go anywhere, or when you're trying to pathfind to a specific location, you're just endlessly going in and out of tubes. Same kind of tubes. There's some slight variation differences in it, but you know, it's kind of the same. It just feels like you're exploring a little bit more. You're exploring a little bit more. You're exploring a little bit more. And I felt like my um experience on that map.
my experience on that map was one more percent, 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 one more percent. You didn't have these sorts of like, holy shit. Like, I remember when I was walking just over here for the first time, I see that there's an entire fucking area over here. And there's this huge bridge over here. And look how excited I am to get there. Holy shit. And what's happening right now? There's escalation. Big set of monsters. That were in the way. The hardest set was at the top. And now that I'm at the top, I have the strong sense that this is going to let me... Oh, fuck yeah. Go up and up. Look at this sense of ceremony that's here. Ah, oh, it's so fucking good, man. This game is Bong. Lane break talisman plus one. All right. Shot him. Oh, this guy. You know, when I think about other open world games compared to this one. There's a lot of lack of anticipation. It's kind of like I'm going forward because I can go forward. I mean, frankly, just having these enormous Erd trees. Constantly emerging out of the landscape. The fact that all the castles are very high up. Even kind of these boring things like Fort Hate and Castle Morn to a lesser extent, like they're they're pretty pretty benign. Let's see if I more got the grace given. Okay, so I can't even go here, huh? I think something didn't load. Okay. Looks like a graphical glitch. Yeah, I mean, um, when I played some open world games, like, I remember playing Immortals Phoenix Rising a while back. Um, and, I mean, it's, it's just as you say, Toka Gaming, there, there's often quest markers on a map, so I'm going to the quest marker, but I don't have the curiosity where I'm like, what's over there? I'm like, I will walk until this thing happens. I will walk until anything occurs. I'm actually super curious that I, I I'm gonna double check if I missed uh, a bonfire up there. Cause there's, I mean, there's a lot of games like for instance, Skyrim. I think the Skyrim map is also fucking gigantic. If I recall correctly. Army Ducinis. Like, um... Is there anything up here? I, I didn't even look. I just fought. And then... It just looks like the answer is no. There's a seal here. Alright, it's probably down there somewhere. Yeah, but I, I remember the map of uh, Skyrim being just huge just huge in terms of like actual square footage but it's like you sort of get the sense of it and you kind of fill it in you kind of fill in this thing and it's fun as hell to fill in you know skyrim kind of reminded me of when you go to an amusement park and they give you one of those amusement park maps that's all fucking stylized and awesome and we can go oh let's go here let's go here oh we did go there huh sweet you know the fact that this game creates so much obfuscation, I think, is a real achievement. I shouldn't say it's a real achievement, it's a real boon to this feeling of making the game.
feel massive in scale. I wanted to look to see if there is anything that I could jump into on top of this. So there's my, there's my, there's my burble. A from soft and hugeness. How to make a game that feels thick, solid, and tight all at the same time. So we supposed. Everyone wants to ask again because I think you might have missed it. Probably did. But since you're already on the top of the plateau, mind if I ask you something about the Grand Lift of Dectus? Um, Dara's. Dara's. I'm giving you a timeout. I want to stress. Please. Don't spoil. Please. And when you make statements like, oh shit, he's in the end. I don't- I actually think that that's incorrect. I think that your assessment is incorrect, but I don't like the feeling of someone spoiling my... Oh, it's coming up! Here it is! <laughs> it just fucking ruins things for me, man. It is a ruinous. But anyways. Uh, when you come back, I would kindly request that you refrain from making any of these kinds of remarks. Still have these. I'm gonna do my reconnection and then I'm gonna use the restroom to take a quick break. Interesting. I wonder where this goes. I mean that's really interesting to see a lift down like that. Maybe it's because there is I ah, it's a much lower area. I'm not gonna go. Oh, yeah, when you come back, please. Please refrain from anything that could be connected to content that is in the future. All right. All right. Right, I know where I am. I know where we are. And the fact is, I, I want to stress to our, our friend that probably inadvertently gave a spoiler there. This comes... From excitement, I understand. It comes from the eagerness and the thrill of being like, wait, excuse me? My utmost thanks for bringing me to the base of the Erd Tree. Here, I can govern my own movement, and thus, the accord is fulfilled. I shall depart to ascertain the purpose I was given. Farewell. Okay, bye-bye. Torrent and the power to turn runes into strength. Here, with you, I wish you luck in realizing your ambition. You have fought long and hard. And have incredible hair. I have no hair. doubt you will become Elden Lord. May you take the throne. Okay. Well, I'm gonna get this to 30, like I said. Feeling so fucking maidenless, man. It sucks. But yeah, I, I know it comes from a place of excitement and exuberance. Oh my gosh, Sean, you're at the end. Yeah. Um, and part of the reason why I give timeouts, why we talk about it so much, is the only way that I think I have been able to have such an unspoiled, fresh. Uh, playthrough through this game. Like, I had no idea that this event was going to happen. It was thrilling. It was the only way that we've been able to do that is by bringing it up a ton. Ghost Talker has the the bot copy pasta being like, Day 9 doesn't want back seating. You know. Um. I think I turned off the air conditioner because it's hot in here. 
stab my face. So, um... So, please don't beat yourself up or feel too bad. Because we're just trying to be really, really, really focused on not getting spoiled on this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. Because I can only hold it for so long. Oh, yeah. We're back. We're going to go through... Landale Royal Capital. Landale Royal Capital is what we're going to be going through. But first, we have to answer Army of Wands' Grand Lift of Dectus question. So we're going to check that out. We're going to check that out. Um, so, one of the benefits of watching someone play who is way earlier than you in the game is that you can find the deck test medallion from the person who's earlier on in your playthrough. The right half is said to reside in Fort Ferreth in Dragon Barrow far to the east. So, in the Dragon Barrow far to the east has to be somewhere here, so I guess it's either this or this little ruin here. Or maybe it's even tucked away over here. We can't be sure. Uh, congrats, well done. I mean, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The only problem was that some of you can't handle not knowing what's going on. Your pal Sean, no problem with it. Absolutely no problem with it. Because the fact is, you might forget. You might forget that every Monday, I play some of the shittiest point-and-click adventure games ever made. You might not have known that I played the 1996 early 3D graphic adventure game where the main character is voiced by Corey Feldman, Normality... And that game has absolute fever dream logic. And when I say fever dream logic, I mean you literally can't progress unless you understand their logic. For instance, one of the tasks that you have to do is there's a sculpture. You need to paint the sculpture yellow. You need to paint the sculpture yellow, okay? But you can't paint it yellow simply by throwing paint on it, right? That would be too boring. What you need to do is you need to have a fire extinguisher. You need to empty the fire extinguisher. And then what you need to do is you need to fill that fire extinguisher with yellow paint found behind a factory. So now you have a fire extinguisher full of yellow paint. But when you go to try to paint the, the statue, the sculpture, you can't because there's a, there's a norm police officer there. There's the norm police, okay? And if you try to spray it, he won't let you. And so, you need to distract him. I'm not going to say what the distraction is, but you need to distract him so that he can go to the distraction and he's now no longer at the sculpture. But you're not going to believe this. You can't fucking pick up the fire extinguisher that's literally right there next to the sculpture and spray it yellow. What you need to do is you need to start a fire on the sculpture so that the police officer who's not here comes back picks up the fire extinguisher, and then sprays the sculpture yellow himself. Like, and I want to stress something. You literally cannot make the game move forward unless that is exactly what you do. So here I am, playing a game where some lift of Dectus won't lift. And so I went this way, and we got up. And I'm sitting here, and I'm going... This is great. This game has absolutely no blocks to progression, but some of you are like, Oh, fuck! Day 9, you're not! Oh, he needs to go to the inventory, he needs to go to the key items! He needs to navigate to this thing called the Deckers Medallion and hit the square button so it tells him to go to Fort Faroth, which is a place he doesn't even know exists! I'm fine. I'm fucking A-OK. -okay. There's no issues here. What is this? Halig Tree Secret Medallion. Right half of a split medallion, depicting the Halic Tree, branching the medallion with both halves conjoined will activate the grand lift of roll, granting access to a hidden path. In other words, the secret medallion will guide the bearer to the land of McKellar's Halic Tree. Whatever the hell that is. 
I don't give a shit. You babies have no idea the trash I subject myself to every Monday. On one of my favorite shows to do, Mostly Walking. I love that show. Rarely gets over a thousand viewers. I do it with two of my best friendos. Sean and Lee. It's so fun. Zamona says this game is a whole lot of you must construct additional pylons. <laughs> Damn right. So funny to me. StarCraft is a strategy game where you don't get to tap into the strategic part for at least 200 hours while you get used to the buttons. Oh, you fucking asshole. Heroes Rune 5! Do your mostly walking friends play Elden Ring? Sean is like 60 hours in, I think. So mournful. Love it. You love it and you love to see it. Oh yeah, there's even a mostly walking wiki made by our very own Dradog. Thanks, Dradog. So, do I want to go down and explore this lower area? I think I do. Because we, we, we've yet to really get through some of the weeds here, and I like to kind of focus on this outer area first. I also want to note something that's important. Uh, my little, my little, uh-oh, hold on one second. Uh, one thing to note, my little my little puppy is undergoing some uh, little doggy doctor visitation. Made us start a little late this morning that we had to take old Bone Eyes to the vet. So uh, if that call comes in, she's still there. It's a 24-hour place, so we're not really sure when we're going to get to see her. We're going to... I... I I'm probably going to just end the show early and go get old CC. All right. <laughs> Fuck, man. Why did it- it should have shattered, man! Come on! Fuck! Oh, God. Daraz says, I'd like to apologize for my earlier outpost. Daraz, you- you are totally in the clear, fine, no issues, no qualms. I actually would never want to communicate to you that you were somehow being a, a jerk. But rather, really grateful that you came back with it cheery, eager attitude. You're the best, Eros. If only the world had more people like you, to be real. Who are like, oh shit, oh, what I said may have caused completely unintentional harm despite my very, very best intentions. And I'm sorry. That's such a scam. Yeah. Said that right. All right, we got another crucible knight. So let's see, we've killed one. So there's one, two, three. Four and five. Six and seven and eight. Is that eight crucible knights, I want to say? Because there's the one at the Ever Jail where you first encounter the crucible knight. 
Then there was the one at Redmain Castle that we fought in the double boss. Then there was the one at uh, Nokron in the faraway side. And then when I'm in Nokron Eternal City, there's the two. There's the uh, Stabber and the Spear Boy. And then there was another one that... Uh, another two that we just fought in the boss fight earlier today. And then this was the eighth one. I feel like I'm missing one. Oh, Stormvale Castle one. That's the one. So that's nine. It's pronounced Gowl. How wonderful. Oh, this is Hayden. Nine thanks, man. I've been watching following since 2008 sometime. Just late to the Prime Party. It's such a boon to me on more levels than I'll get into. It's also kind of neat that we share a birthday, but only kind of. <laughs> I love the ambiguity laced in that statement. What am I to do with this? Hilarious. Holy shit, a thousand damage and you don't die? to do it. This is interesting. What an interesting way to explore this. It's covered in ash. Payoff was terrible. There you go. I mean, this this reminds me of a lot of apocalypse media. You know, like in uh, Half Life Two, where they seal off doors. Doors get condemned. Uh oh, radioactivity oh, inside. Oh no. I just pull out my enormous, bright ass LED gravel stone. How? Oh shit. Ah! But I mean, these show up all over Apocalypse Media. The door that's sealed shut to try to prevent an infection. Zombies in Dad Dare's spot. Do not enter. Don't dead, open inside. Have you played What Remains of Edith Finch? I haven't, Lejong Z. I have not. Is what remains of Edith Finch? Is that Giant Sparrow? <laughs> that Giant Sparrow. Ian Dallas, the guy that founded um, 
Giant Sparrow. I fucking I went to grad school with Ian. He was one year above me. And I, I will remember I remember this so crystal clearly, okay? <laughs> so Ian Dallas at the time was working on the game that would become what what was what's Giant Sparrow's first game? It's um where you shoot and it, it, the entire world's white and you shoot black paint and it splats on the world and that's how you explore. Yeah, the unfinished swan, that's right. Brilliant game, brilliantly executed. But I mean, the, the thing that I didn't understand when I first got to uh, that program, okay, so let, let me back up. I uh, studied math in undergrad and I was gonna go pursue PhD in math, but it was just too fucking hard. So. I applied to half math grad schools, half um, interactive media game design type things, you know, like Carnegie Mellon's program, um, USC, etc. cetera. Um, so I wound up going to USC. That was one of the only places I got into, <laughs> huzzah. Um, so I got into that USC program and it was a complete mind melter for me because I was used to this sort of technical schooling background where it was like, here's your homework. Do these problem sets, do assignments, here's more abstract concepts, here's more problems, here's a test, there's more problems. So let's focus on like, do it, do the thing, do the thing, do the thing. Then I get to this creative program and they're just like, all right, what's the project that you want to do? And let's figure out how to make your coursework support that. You know, so for instance, there would be a course that was on um, visual elements in the frame. You know, where you talk about things like how to showcase depth through things like, you know, the diffusion in the air that makes colors more desaturated. You know, just, here's a way to describe, here's the language to figure out how to discuss what's happening visually on in a 2D image to represent 3D and so on. So, how could that support maybe a game that you're working on, Sean? So, um, Ian was one of these students who like had a project that was really taken off and really consuming a lot of his time. That was the Unfinished Swan, which was a world where every single texture on every object was bright white. And the mechanic was that you would shoot a little black paint ball that would splat and leave a mark on the ground and that's how you could navigate the space. So it was sort of a mix of like a puzzle game combined with a really interesting visual exploration kind of game. So Ian was doing tons of making all his coursework directed towards that, doing talks about it, this sort of thing. And it wound up being the first game that the company he founded, uh, Giant Sparrow, would turn into a full product. But I had to do a project with Ian. It was a very simple project. There were these seminars that would occur where some speaker who maybe uh, was a game designer in the field or did interactive art would come and they would they would do a presentation and a pair of students were required to film it from multiple angles, edit it into a nice video piece that would then get uploaded so that way there would be an archive of all these seminars that people that people did. So we set up the cameras, we filmed it, we filmed the dude. And then I was afterwards I was like, alright, Ian, do you want Ian, do you want to, like, get together sometime and, like, do this edit together? And Ian says to me, I'll never forget, Ian says to me, how about you just take a first pass at it? Which, which, let's be real, is a way of going, Sean, you fucking do it. <laughs> and I, I saw what was happening and I went, no, I would really prefer to be able to incorporate some of your thoughts into it. And he says, no, I trust you. And like, and like, as an adult, what I would have gone is like, Ian, just fucking set aside an hour and let's just do this together, please. I don't want to do this alone. And he would have gone, sure, cool. But I was, let's see, I was like 22 at the time. So this is like fucking 13 years ago. So instead what I did is I went, no problem, with my heart rate at 180, furious, knuckles clenched. This motherfucker's gonna make me fucking do it. And I went and I fucking edited the shit together and it was good. And I was like, and I sent it to him. And you know what I said in the email? All right, let me let me tell you what I sent with my tone. I went, hey Ian, 
I went ahead and did what you suggested and took a first pass at it. Would you like to make any changes? Right? Because I'm pissed. But what Ian read was, Hey, Ian. I did what you said and uh, made a first pass at it. Let me know if you want to do any changes. It was received very positively. And he sends an email back. I looked it out. I have no notes. This is fantastic. Wow, thank you so much. I was so fucking mad. I was conned. I was tricked. <laughs> and I've had only positive interactions with Ian for years ever since. <laughs> I mean, I mean, later, later, I even brought it up to him. He's like, "Yeah, I felt kind of bad about that. I didn't mean for it to go that way." And I was like, "How dare you diffuse this by being sensible and pleasant, you piece of fucking shit!" <laughs> like, I really, I really was not good at handling my shit back then. But yeah. And so, and so, I know, I know someone's gonna be like, Ian, Ian, come here, you need to see this right now, and they're gonna send a clip of this moment. And I know, I know for a fact, Ian's gonna watch this story. He's gonna see everything I said, and he's gonna go, you did a great job, I have no notes. <laughs> oh, I see, oh! Ah! Stab, 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 stab! All right, so, so there's the sort of like under sewer area here. So what I could do is I'm actually going to go off to this little branched area. This seems to be a nice little cordoning of this area. So there's down to the sewer, and that's up to this little path over here. Nice. I'm gonna explore this from the high ground. You fried Swedish fish. We have not beat the main quest. We're not even entirely sure what the main quest is because this is a FromSoft game. Look at me. I'm Sekiro. Black bow. It's a boss fight area if I ever saw one. Made that jump. Cold room fucking 12. Ah! I can get up there? Betcha I can. I can't believe I keep making these jumps. Kind of. So I was able to. I don't think I can actually get up here on this side. I haven't really explored this back area too much. Almost get up there. Almost. Maybe if I just hopped down here from up there. Put a little marker. Oops. Oops. Uh, remove this. Put a little, little thing here. Ouch. Great jump, no notes. Thanks, guys. Can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Oh my god. Vindestructible says, Have you heard the reason they named the horse Torrent is to help prevent piracy? So when people search Elden Ring Torrent, it shows articles about the horse. That sounds like such a tall tale. That sounds like such a tall tale. That is the tallest tale I've ever heard. That sounds like something that someone heard and thought made enough sense so they just never stopped repeating it ever forever. It's a fun story, though. Come on. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind that it was fun to say. It's fun to hear. 
It's all fun in all dimensions. No doubt in my mind. But I don't believe it even slightly for more than no seconds. You can't do it. You can't do it. You, you couldn't pay me a million dollars to believe that story. I knew it. I knew it was a boss. Oh, one of you fuckers. Sure. Got me last time. No, it can't be. Stand it now. I have enough vitality. Oh, just see me dodge roll that? You see me roll that shit? Oh my god, even staggering the beast. Golden seed, hell yeah. Oh, this is the best build. I'm so... Oh yes. Golden arrow. Starring John Travolta. Smith Smithing Stone 6! It's all we've ever wanted. We want this knockout out. We get to a level. Uh, let's see. We need to. We need four of these to upgrade to 17. Then we need six of these to upgrade to 18. And then it's just going to be boom, 19, boom, 20, baby. Schmishing stone. Bathe it in harsh light. This is the kind of light that you never want to have if you're looking at a mirror and you have acne. All acne babies know this. All acne children. Like, some of you grew up with terrible, painful acne. As did I. Plenty of scars on the face to prove it. In fact, I'm 35, going on 36. Wait, am I 36? What year is this? 2022? No, I'm 35. This has been a good year. Um, I'm 30 fucking 5. And I still get acne, man. Shit sucks. And what happens is, you're hanging out, you're feeling confident, you're feeling good, you're saying jokes, people are laughing. You have a crush, your crush is giving you eye contact, you give an eye contact right back, you're like, I fucking rule. Then you go in front of a, into a bathroom, and you have a light like this, and it, it literally looks like your face is radioactive. It's horrible. It fucking sucks, man. Dark Hunter says, acne looks like scarlet rot in that light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good shit. Uh, hold on, my my legs too tight. Nucleotides says you're only thirty five. I thought you were twenty nine because you look younger than I do. Ugh, maybe I just look old. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I look fucking great today. Oh, hi. I really gotta not fuck around with these guys. Oops. Do you see how? Fuck. Yeah. Oh, you fucker. Oh, 
Oh, fuck. Oh! Oh! Fuck, I put my shield away! Against one of these clowns? These are easy clowns! Fucking, fucking, fuck. Damn it. <laughs> now everyone's saying I have no notes. <laughs> You're all bastards. I don't have any notes. I have no notes. That was really good. <laughs> Is he really a clown under that helmet? Yes, you can see some of his dumb, colorful paint pouring out. I'm gonna go back and stab that kiddo. Understand why there's the wolf top. It's so fast to get back to here, my God. Oh, there's my stuff. Tarnished now, huh? Me, I'm the tarnished. Cracked pot, dude. I have so many of these. Let's see here, a ten cracked pot. Shit. Anyways, I feel like we were talking about something. Oh yeah, acne, man. These lights. Oh my god. I mean, it was absolute heck. Okay, so this is how we get across here. Is there... This appears to be a bridge here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the sewers where I feel like I belong. What do you know? There's rats. Oh shit. That's literally the last thing I wanted. Fingers. Gross. Little crawly guys. Let's do it again. One more time. Guilty hood. Danny Sin says, What boss have you killed in the capital? We have killed just the Oriza Hero's Grave pair of bosses. Look, I'm you in a boss fight. Hey, this is the number of times I've just finished some hard boy and then a single rat combos me. It's embarrassing. No, it's not embarrassing. It's the game, man. Oh! See? Bad rat, bad rat.
the rat and his friend the entire hand. Do you think that when they go to bed at night, the rat lies down and the hand just like fully spoons the rat on all sides? Can you imagine that? Because I'm not going to lie, my figure is not that dissimilar from one of these rats, but like literally those hands just like, oh, uh, just like cradling me. I'm just like, I feel so safe inside all your weird fingers. <laughs> oh, yes. I rise else I don't want to think about this. Well, you are now. I said it and you're thinking it. We're all thinking it. What is this? It might be above. I'm gonna put a little... I think it's just invisible. above. I don't care anymore. Still vitality. Tell that hallway. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you're on my side. Seriously, angsty. Hey, seriously, angsty. Was it you who accidentally went as your first boss fight to the um, Forspoken Badoken? Oh, that's the best fucking story. That is the best fucking story. Man, that story is just as, is astonishingly awesome. Not ready to go there yet. For any who don't know the story, so in in this game, you start right here. Alright, here, here here's your first steps, okay? So, our friend seriously angsty, started off the game, went this way, saw a little down arrow, saw some birds, went to the water, went straight over here, and went into a tomb in the dragon burnt ruins that then teleported him to the Celia Crystal Tunnel. Which traps you in the middle of the tunnel, not at the entrance, in the middle. <laughs> and seriously, Angsty then realized they weren't strong enough to fight anything and tried to run to the exit. And instead ran to the boss <laughs> and was against, like, and that's one of the hardest bosses in the entire fucking game. <laughs> and get this, this is the first... The very first boss that Seriously Angsty has ever experienced in any Souls game was this. <laughs> I mean, that is so fucking funny. Yeah, it was the uh, Falling Star Beast. Oh, that's, I mean, that's incredible. So that will curl back this way, but I wanted to clear out this. First. Alright. Uh, this way.
mean, I love this thing. Poison bone dart. Interesting. Sewers run. The gamut through the entire castle. Little fucker. Fuck you. Not as scary as your daddy, but you still freaked me right the hell out. Fingers. Yes, this is good shit. How many upgrades do you have on your shield? Zero, Ramsey Red Wolf. Zero. It doesn't improve the block. Patty D says, where do you get the Spectral Lance from? Super handy weapon art? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Je ne sais pas. So bright. I know, dude. It's like, it's like a little bit out of character in this game. I'm pretty sure it's over ground. You speak French? Not really. So this is curled in this way. Alright, do your worst down here. Fan daggers. Those are for you. Holy proof dried liver. Erd steel dagger. <laughs> Holy proof dried liver! I mean, that actually is like a Robin level exclamation. The second Erd steel dagger I have? It is. Ooh, I'm sick. Cheesy Bob says that it's... Okay, says shields do upgrade their block. It just starts around level two or three. What? What? This is so sweet. I had no idea, because here's the thing, is that, like, I I'm probably just no life in it with this visage shield for the rest of the game. I mean, this thing, it weighs 24. It's huge. I mean, it's just insane. Hold on, hold on, CC's okay. <sighs> oh. Oh, I'm so relieved my dog's okay. Oh. Oh my god, that's good news. Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh that's very good news. Oh, that's good news. Oh. Okay. All right. 
Oh my god. Oh, woo. Okay. All right. Oh, my dog is okay. So I'm going to be hopping off in about 10 minutes to go pick up my doggy. Oh. Oh my god. Thank you all for the love and support. Yeah, this morning we had to go live late because Cece threw up twice within an hour. And she was, um, she has little chew toy, uh, or chewy treats. But she was throwing up large chunks of it. So we were really worried that, like, she'd gotten something lodged in her because it's it's really uncommon to have a dog, like, throw up twice. And she, I don't know, it was, we, we were concerned. So we went to the doctor and had to get her all checked out, make sure she's doing okay. Um, doggy's good. Doggy is doing okay. We gotta we gotta go pick her up in a little bit, and I I'm just gonna go hang out with my dog. What kind of dog? An American bully. <sighs> Jesus. See, I can ha I can handle being in a state of intense tension. All right, you you want you want to see you want to see CC? You know, let's let's show CC. Where's me? Where's me? We, we tweeted some some dog based content. Okay, let me see if we can. All right. There's my dog trying to eat a carrot. Look at this. There she is. Ah, she's trying to. Ah, she's trying to eat that carrot. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. Oh, I fucking love that dog. And in very exciting news, she uh, she has a chronic kidney condition that is. Tragically, untreatable. Just can't treat it. So it's all about how quickly it progresses. And thanks to our little investigationing. Twinkling's gonna drive me insane. Uh, we've learned that she has had no progression in the last six months. So she is she is actually alarmingly healthy. May I ask the name of the disease? It is, um, I think it's just called chronic kidney disease. Oh, oh, here it fucking is. Ash of War, Thunderbolt. Oh! These, these fucking guys. Hey, look, it was me a few seconds ago. Oh, I'm so. Oh, fuck. I'm so relieved. Oh my god, I'm just feeling the tension leak out of me. My goodness. There will be pizza. There will be beer. Oh, jeez, Louise. Oh my god, I'm so fucking relieved. Ow. Oh my god. <sighs> Oh. Oh. Ow. Fuck me. What's in my eye? Ow, there's something in my eye. Oh god, it's bits- it's bits of dog cheese snack! Alright, hold on. I'm just putting in some rewetting drops here. Alright, don't mind me. Don't mind me. Or, 
or look, or look right at me. Oh, Crawdaddio gifted 10 dog subs. Hell yeah. Cheers to a healthy doggo. Fuck yeah, man. Hi, and you're a healthy cat. We already knew that. Yeah, I knew this is where this comes out. Great. really wash your hands before doing that? No, no, I, I talked to the doctor, and he said that as long as I'm playing with the same PlayStation controller that I hold after eating food, it's fine. <laughs> he was like, it's really not a big deal. Armor, Lionel's Gauntlets, Lionel's Greaves, Lionel, even heavier than my Radon's, oh my god, e even, but this actually has better, better overall physical, it is better poise, 17.5, 21, actually literally worse physical damage negation, but look at that poise gain, dude. Oh, let's see what it looks like. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Look, look, look at this beautiful tree sentinel armor. And then look at this. At, look, the game even makes my arms go in and out. So I can fucking fit in this armor. Look at this. Look at this shit. Oh my god. This is some fucking QA work. Uh, I, I don't know about those arms. Look, these arms stay the same, but then... Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's... I guess... I guess... I guess... You know, 29 Vigor is good enough. Oh shit, I don't fucking have the right thing out. Excuse me. Omen Smirk Mask. Smithing Stone 6. Fuck yeah, dude. We're gonna have a great start tomorrow. It's definitely a kickable ladder. You can tell because of the double runs. Yo, it's the Capra Demon? Yeah. Nice little homagio. MTG tomorrow. I, I, I'm thinking I do want to play some MTG tomorrow. At least want to do the one. You know, I'm not even going to sweat it. My sweetheart, you can sit wherever you want. I gotta be honest, like, I have hardly been able to focus for the last little bit of time. What am I doing? This is my very good girl. God, a, a hero rune five. 35,000. Holy shit. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Let's go to this guy and be like, Forgutter? Forgutter? I literally thought that you stopped existing the moment you walked away. I need to do better than this. This will never kill a god. I can do better than this. It needs to slay a bloody god. 
Oh, don't pay me any more. Just lay out your arms. The girl you bore here. She's crestfallen and can scarcely swing a blade. But she has a gift for spirit tuning. I saw another one like her long ago. Her eyes shut. No, there's only too much into it. Well, no grudge against you. My being a prisoner is no fault of yours. Besides, I don't mind smithing. Despite my differences, the weapons get stronger all the same. Even time. He's a prisoner? We got a new quest coming? Technique. Jabberwocky, who's been dropping by and giving five here and there. Thanks, man. The sheer terror of her. All right. So... Dude, look at that. So this this can actually upgrade the guard boost? I, like, I almost don't believe this. This is a somber smithing stone. Fuck yeah. Guard boost to 76. 78. Fuck yeah. Holy shit, fuck yeah, dude. Oh my god. Look at this fucking idiot shield. This is incredible. It just it, it gives so much 78 guard boost. Unbelievable. Alright, we gotta we gotta pop some of these, and then I'm gonna turn this. Color shield an idiot. Sure I did. Sure I did. Uh so actually if I I can do this, right? I can actually just sell these. 75. Okay, 75 plus 10k is 17.5 plus another 10 is 27. Yeah, we're nowhere close to a level. So let's let's I'm gonna put this little starter here. So here's where we'll begin. I marked this whole area off just as a reminder that I can still go here. Oh, wait, Cheesy Bob, that's right. The problem I had... Oh. Oh, this is it. <laughs> Romeo type person. Sorry. Having too much fun watching our toasts is getting absolutely wrecked by Mutilus while you casually upgrade your weapon. The contrast is stunning. <laughs> I'm following any quests, Ask We Hurricane. I've completed the the arena quest. She's dead. She's dead as shit, man. She fucking She got she got cracked like a coconut. And her dad was like, I'll kill a whole lot of people because I was a bad dad. And I was like, all right, man, you're still a shit dad, bro, you know. I pieced out of that so fast. Dude, oh my god. Give me 80. Give me 80 guard boosties. Give me 80, man. He's a somber smithing stone 7. Oh, fuck. Anything the main guy in Severance looks like Artosis? Dude, not even remotely. I think Adam Scott looks nothing like Artosis. Artosis, Artosis, if you want to know a celebrity that looks like Artosis, look up. The Muppet Sam the Eagle. <laughs> this will be my final. This will be my final gift to you. <laughs> you're gonna fucking look it up, and you're gonna go, "Oh shit!" Let me. Let, okay, I gotta move my cat for this. Hold on. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me let me assemble some content really fast. Okay. Our. Let me get these up. Artosis. Images. There it is. It's a good one. All right, so that, that's a that's a good image, of Sam the Eagle. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
All right, let me see if, is this content gonna be good? Okay. Let me, actually, you know what? I'm gonna make this even better. Let me look up Ar Artosis Angry. Let me see if I can find this. God, these, these are, these are okay. We're gonna find the right one. Oh, someone already created this meme. Look at that. I'm trying to find the perfect image. We're not we're not gonna turn off the stream till we find the right. Look up Artosis Mad. What about that one? No, I actually think that the just looking up Artosis was the right one. Yeah, this is Okay, this this is this is gonna this is gonna tickle you, okay? This is gonna tickle you. Okay. So this is this is my friend Dan. Dan is currently in a game. And he's not happy about what's happening. And and this This is Sam the Eagle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's that's You think Adam Scott from Severance looks like Artosis? Like He's playing. <laughs> oh man, Dan's the best. I'm gonna fucking raid Dan after this. You guys are gonna love it. You guys are gonna be just, just, just absolutely thrilled. Oh, oh my god. All right, let's let's go ahead and set ourselves up for success here. All right. All right, Ghost Target says the chat experience may induce shock. Please be warned. Let's let's not egg on my 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 dear friend. Dan is someone that is very very dear to me. One level an hour. That's me. 